90.3 WHPC now presents Law You Should Know. The law affects every aspect of our lives, our home, our jobs, and our recreational activities. Now, learn about the law and how to protect yourself against the loss of your liberty or property and learn how to stand up for your rights and seek compensation when you have been wronged. Your host for Law You Should Know is attorney Kenneth J. Landau, a past dean of the Nassau Academy of Law and frequently lectures to lawyers on ethics and avoiding problems with clients and to the public on how to choose and use lawyers. This is Law You Should Know on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Hi, this is Ken Landau, and welcome to Law You Should Know. Today, it's my pleasure and privilege to interview the new president of the Nassau County Bar Association, Gregory S. Lisi. Greg, welcome back to Law You Should Know. I know you've been our guest to talk about employment law over the years, and we'll touch on that a little bit later. But congratulations on becoming the president of the Bar Association. And of course, it's tough for lawyers and litigants out there as we emerge from COVID. But what are your plans for the Bar Association to help lawyers cope with COVID and the general public as well? Well, thanks, Ken. I appreciate the uh, the accolades. And, and uh, you know, I, as president of the Bar Association, get to stand on the shoulders of giants like the presidents who have come before, uh, like you. And uh, it, it, it's, it, it's a real honor to be the president of this Bar Association. Um, it's a real... Um, uh, duty, especially this year, because we are coming out of COVID and the Bar Association building and, and much of the, the events that the Bar Association normally has was essentially closed last year. And so this year, we're really trying to come back in in, in a great rush of things. And we really feel like uh, there's a lot that can be done this year. We're here to uh, help not only our members and, and the attorneys of Nassau County, but the general public as well. And we have a lot of events that that are specific uh, not only to the lawyers and, and the attorneys of Nassau County, but to the general public. I just want to say I, I've never had the responsibility of being the president of the Nassau County Bar Association. I was the dean of the Nassau Academy of Law and yes. chair of various committees. And one thing that the Bar Association offers is a very active continuing legal education program available to lawyers on Long Island and all over the state. And many of those programs were over Zoom. And, and really recently, you activities have returned to Domus, the longtime headquarters of the Bar Association in Mineola. So tell us about what operations are physically taking place in Domus in, and that you anticipate will take place during 2022. Yeah, essentially everything is back open at Domus from the, uh, the, the restaurant and the caterers reopened uh, all the way to exactly, as you said, the CLE, the Continuing Legal Education. Uh, one of the great things that, that we do is uh, with the membership at the Nassau County Bar Association, you actually get the CLEs now for free. You don't have to pay for them uh, as it was in the old days. And uh, it's now part of your dues. And so you can take uh, as many or as few classes as you want, and you can learn new areas of law or uh, brush up on the things you already know about. Uh, the, the, the CLE classes run the gamut from very basic to very sophisticated in just about every area of law. Um, we are one of the most, if not probably the most active bar association, uh, local bar association in, tw- in 2021. Many of them haven't even really reopened uh, their buildings or, uh, or they don't have anything live really at all. It's all on Zoom. Um, we actually have most of our stuff uh, that we're doing live. Um, although we are doing it in a hybrid so that people who want to stay on Zoom can, but we've really had great attendance uh, coming down to the Bar Association. Uh, we tell people to be vaccinated. If they're not vaccinated, they have to have uh, masks on, but um, we've really had very good attendance. People are coming down, they're networking, they're meeting with people, they're getting in the rooms. Um, our events have been very well attended from uh, the, the earlier we had a, the, the gala uh, which had over 180 people. We had the Meet the Judges Night, which had over 200 people at it. 
Um, we have uh, events upcoming for We Care and, and a number of other things that have been very, very highly uh, attended. And you will have all these events again during 2022. And I just want to mention that the, the Bar Association and the National Academy of Law have many past programs that are available for downloads if attorneys miss them. And attorneys anywhere in the country or the world, for that matter, can download them over the Internet in case yeah, you miss the funny. program. You're, at, you're bringing up a very good point. Actually, Zoom... Um, while it was a lifeline during COVID, certainly for many, many people, it has actually increased our, our membership because we have many members now because we do put on such uh, very good CLE programs and such and so many of them. We've actually had a real increase of members outside of Nassau County because they see the programs that we've been putting on and they are uh, joining the Bar Association for the free CLE so that they can get on Zoom and watch uh, some of our fantastic speakers and judges and professors who come in and, and speak. So it's very interesting that you brought that up because we actually do have members now in Europe and upstate New York and, and elsewhere. And you have special programs for new lawyers and young lawyers, which will help them meet their initial CLE requirements as well. That's right. We, we Not only can the new lawyers take any CLE class that they want, but we actually have a Bridge the Gap weekend um, where it's an entire weekend. They can get all their credits uh, th- that they need in the first year. As, as uh, new lawyers will tell you, and many of us older attorneys don't realize, the new lawyers actually have to have more CLEs than some of us, and we help them, but we help them get that. And all the lawyers can attend those programs too to get their CLE credits as well. Of course. One of the big bar association programs, and it's really more for the general public, and it's going to be very popular in 2022, I'm afraid, is the Mortgage Foreclosure Clinic. So tell us about how those programs help the general public and how the general public can find out more about those programs. Yeah, so we have a number of programs, uh, the Mortgage Foreclosure Clinic being one of them, um, that is specifically geared towards the general public. We have attorneys come in and they volunteer their time. All of them, what I'm about to tell you is, is essentially free. Um, not even essentially free. It's free. Um, and what we're doing is we're, we're providing a service for the general public. So the, the one you mentioned, Ken, is the mortgage foreclosure clinic. So as ev- everybody knows and understands during this time, there's been many, many people who have gone into foreclosure. This was even true well before COVID. Um, after 2008, um, we realized that there was a real problem here in Nassau County with people getting foreclosed upon. And they really, obviously, if they're getting foreclosed upon, they did not have uh, the money to hire an attorney. What we did was we put together a clinic of volunteer attorneys and we came, became the first bar association in New York State to address this mortgage foreclosure crisis. And these volunteer attorneys sit down with people and they try to help them. Um, and we have these clinics uh, monthly uh, at the at, they're free to the general public. You have to call and sign up and make a reservation, but you get to sit down with an attorney who knows what he's talking about, and and she can help you uh, with this. Now she doesn't take on the entire case, but she certainly can point you in the right direction. And these people know what we're doing. But that's not the only free event that uh, free clinics that we give. For example, after Superstorm Sandy, we created the Superstorm Sandy Clinic. And the Superstorm Sandy Clinic helped victims of the clin- of the storm with, the, again, mortgage foreclosure stuff, but also landlord-tenant issues, claims, getting it with their insurance company, debt referral, consumer protection, even bankruptcy, all things that came from Superstorm Sandy, dealing with New York Rising, et cetera. That is actually still going on because there's still so many issues that have arisen from Superstorm Sandy and then storm since then. We actually do another thing called the Access to Justice uh, Open House, in which once a year, we have many attorneys come into the Bar Association, sit down, and anybody who wants can come to the Bar Association building. It's called Domus, and they can sit down with an attorney in an area that, uh, of law that they need or need knowledge on, and they can sit with them for 15 minutes, a half hour, whatever it takes, and discuss their case. That attorney will then, first off, tell them what to do or refer them over to uh, different agencies that can help. Some of them are free, like uh, uh, for example, the safe center, um, but also they can go to the lawyer referral service, which can refer you, uh, the Nassau County Lawyer Referral Service, which can refer you to an attorney 
in that specific area of law and you can hire them if you decide you like the that and the, the lawyer referral service is very very useful it has hundreds and hundreds of attorneys on it so even if someone doesn't in your area even Sorry. if someone doesn't make it down to that in-person face-to-face program they can call the bar association to be put in touch with a member of the lawyer referral service in their particular area of need and have a low-cost consultation that's right. So we have a, a person who is at the lawyer referral service. You call that person. Um, her name is Pat Carbonero. And she, you can tell her about your case. She will understand and know whether that's a matrimonial case or a labor and employment law case or a trust in the state's case. And she will refer you to an attorney, actually multiple attorneys, who handle that area of law. And you get a low cost, uh, $50 for the first half hour consultation with the with that attorney. And then if you decide you want to hire them, you certainly are able to do so. And Greg, just we'll cover some more of these programs in the next few minutes, but give us the contact information for the Bar Association, both by email and by telephone. Sure. So uh, by telephone, it's 516-747-4070. The website for the Nassau County Bar Association is www. Hold on, I got to make sure I got it right. Um, I would say nasabar.org. That's correct. Thank you. You can you can get into the through the email through that way, through the bar association, or you can call as I said 516-747-4070 and if you do get uh, uh the, you want to press the button for the lawyer referral service. And I just want to uh, mention that to our listeners that you're listening to Law You Should Know here on 90.3 WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College in Garden City, New York. And if you missed any portion of this program or want to listen to it again or tell someone else about it, it's available at nccradio.org. And and Greg, uh, congratulations again on becoming the president of the Nassau County Bar Association. Just tell us about your professional background, your your firm and your, your own areas of expertise. Well, sure. So I am the head of labor and employment at Forcelli Deegan Tirana. Uh, labor and employment uh, encompasses uh, many, many things, but the, the, the basics are sexual harassment cases, discriminatory firing, wage issues. We represent management uh, with the unions, um, union uh, negotiating on behalf of management. We represent management in defending those types of cases that I was discussing, um, immigration issues, et cetera. Um, the firm is a full service firm. We represent businesses of, uh, of from small businesses up to Fortune 500 businesses um, and all publicly traded, privately held municipalities, all of that. Uh, we do quite a lot of uh, labor and employment, but we really do uh, anything that a business needs whatsoever. And I imagine as we emerge from COVID, there'll be plenty of companies that need your expertise to represent them as, as the, in the post-COVID environment. Yes. Yeah, so, so COVID has certainly changed the lands, the landscape in labor and employment. We get calls from individuals as well as companies all the time um, asking what their rights are, what they have to do for their employees, what happens when an employee gets COVID, what happens when an employee has a fever, um, how can they lay off people, can they be laid off, do they have to get a, the, the, the newest one, as you can imagine, is do they have to get a vaccine as more and more companies require vaccines, et cetera. And I guess also will be the what the new normal will be for, for lawyers, for law firms and for your your corporate clients as people seek alternate arrangements to re- work remotely, to return to the office part time or some combination thereof. How do you think that's going to uh, work itself out? Well, you're absolutely right. That's become a very big, big deal. I would say six months ago, I was getting a lot more calls from my my management clients that were asking, how do I set up my company now that everybody's going to be working at home for the rest of our lives? But now, as as more and more people are uh, coming back to the office, there's much more of a hybrid situation. Most employers are now require, uh, requiring their employees to be back in the office at least part time, if not full time. Um, but, you know, Zoom and, and Microsoft uh, are, are the waves of the future. And there are many companies that are allowing their people to to work from home. And that is creating a whole new area of law because 
all the requirements of employers are still there. You still have to know the hours that people are working. You still have to know what wages they're paid. You still have to pay them overtime. And the fact that they're working in front of their computer in their living room doesn't change that. And, do you and think, so there's a lot of rules and regulations there that are coming into play. And do you think there'll be a new physical setup of the office where instead of uh, big open areas, people will want partitions, people will want more distance between them and their colleague rather than one central gathering place across the table? Well, I, I do think that that was something that a lot of people were talking about. Um, partitions were very much the way of the, of the world six months ago, a year ago. Um as more and more people are vaccinated, I'm getting less and less questions about that. But the new OSHA rules have, uh, have come out, although they've been stayed by the Fifth Circuit. Um, a lot of them talk about partitions and six feet apart and masks and vaccines. Um, and it's going to it's going to be very interesting how it shakes out. Um, six months ago, there were very few employers who were ready to say, require vaccines for their employees. Now you're starting to see quite a lot of uh, employers who are requiring vaccines for their employees, or at least vaccines and, and, and if not testing, and that's also affecting how the, uh, the employer is handling it and how the employees are re- responding and reacting to it. Um, there are many employees who are talking about that they have religious exemptions and disability issues and allergies. And these are all coming into play at this point. Um, and employers are having to roll with the punches, if you will, and make their their employment areas and their uh, offices compliant. And do you think if someone has a special concern, the employer should listen to it and try to resolve it? Well, absolutely. I mean, first off, I think the law requires that if somebody claims a disability or claims a religious exemption, you have to listen to it. You have to go through the steps that the Supreme Court um, and federal law require you to do to, to, to make to see or make sure that they do have a truly believed religious exemption or a truly believed uh, disability. Um, and there's a lot of steps you have to go. But even if you don't, they're not saying that just anybody coming to you with a concern you should take seriously. You don't have to comply. You don't have to. There's no requirement that anybody have to has to work from home, um, but you should have the interactive process and go through and listen to what they're saying. And uh, for general morale reasons, at least, um, certainly give people an opportunity to voice their concerns and see if there's a way to to help them. I never tell people to change their business. They have to run their business the way they have to, but they do have to be compliant with the law. And don't forget, there are multiple laws that you have to be compliant with. There's federal law, there's state law, there's city law, there's county law. So you got to be very careful of all of those things and make sure that just because you're in compliance with one of them doesn't necessarily mean you're in compliance with all of them. So, Okay, just returning to the Bar Association, do you want to mention the Bar Association programs that they've run for many years for mock trial and moot court programs for high school and law school students? Oh, yes. So, so some of the wonderful, wonderful things that we do uh, as uh, outreach to the general public includes exactly what you were just talking about. Uh, we run a high school mock trial uh, and we run the law school moot court competitions. Um, I personally have been a judge and a coach at different times on the high school mock trial uh, program. It is phenomenal. These high school kids are absolutely fantastic. It's a really fun way. The, 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 the Nassau County Courts, uh, Judge St. George was the administrative judge recently, and now it's Judge DiStefano, have always been great with us. They allow us to br- have these uh, moot court competitions right there in the courthouse. Um, it's really wonderful for the kids. Uh, they have a great time, and many of them end up moving on and becoming lawyers themselves. It's really, it's really wonderful stuff. Um, we also provide uh, student mentors to, to high school children who are uh, at risk. Um, Alan Hodish has run that program for years, and it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, opportunity for somebody to uh, mentor a, a high school student, and that goes through the Bar Association. Um, and you know, and I think that's gym- also yeah. at, at local middle schools as well, the mental That's program. correct. Okay. Yeah, that's also correct. It's also at middle schools, and it's and, just wonderful. And if someone, if there's a middle school out there or a high school that like would like to find out about the, the mock trial tournament or the moot court, 
the Bar Association can try to arrange advisors for lawyers, volunteer lawyers to act as advisors to that program or other lawyers to act as student mentors. And they should just contact the Bar Association to try to get that program going in their schools. Right. They can call uh, the Bar Association at 516-747-4070 and just ask for the person who's in charge of each one of those different programs, and we can set that right up for them. And if lawyers want to volunteer to be those uh, mentors or to be those mock trial advisors, they can also contact the Bar Association as well. That's right. And you have many other programs uh, for 2022 without giving dates. Maybe we could just highlight some and People are invited to go to the Bar Association website to look at that program. But you might be having a program on uh, on landlord and tenant rights, especially as the moratorium on eviction come to an end. And that should be a, right. a very important program for tenants out there. Right. So we have a number of programs that we've set up where lawyers are coming in and they're going to speak to the general public. Uh, it's called the Know Your Rights series. And uh, the first one that's upcoming is uh, on hate hate crime victims program where, the, where people who are victims of hate crimes can learn their rights. Um, and then as you had talked about, we have the landlord tenants rights. That's gonna be very interesting how that play, plays out as the moratorium ends. And also um, protecting yourself from consumer scams because there are many scams out there, maybe more because of COVID. And there's also going to be a program on housing discrimination. That's always been a subject in Newsday, but you're going to provide landlords and tenants with information on how to protect themselves against discriminatory practices. That's right. So, I, And you're exactly right. We decided that that was a very important program to put together. We have multiple attorneys who are going to be at this um, to talk about the different sides, both from the landlord side and the tenant side. Um, we're going to talk about all the different aspects where we uh, believe there's going to be a very large turnout. There should be lots of questions. Uh, questions are certainly welcome. Um, but we want people to understand about that their rights under under housing discrimination laws, um, because they are there's been new ones that have been passed. Um, and it's by the way, it's from all different aspects of it. There's the realtors, there's the landlords, there's the tenants. Everybody's welcome. Everybody can come and ask questions. It's really a wonderful thing. We're also doing something along those lines uh, with uh, Social Security disability law, which, it, 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 you know, especially when no one, someone has never been involved in that before and suddenly they need that, it's, it, it can be very foggy. And very difficult to, to, to figure out. And, and that, so and that, and that, that much well. more as people cope with lingering effects of COVID and whether that qualifies for Social Security disability. Absolutely. And, and, and it's very important. There's a lot of laws that are out there to help people who have had COVID. Um, Social Security disability is one of them. The, the, the paid family medical leave is also out there. The Family Medical Leave Act, the Federal Family Medical Leave Act. And all of these things are going to get discussed because these are all important and they all interact with each other and can be, seem very confusing to the layperson. But we're going to have people who practice in that area of law all the time to come down and talk and answer questions. I just want to remind our listeners that you're listening to Law You Should Know on 90.3 WHPC, the voice of NASA Community College in Garden City, New York. We're talking with the president of the Bar Association, Gregory S. Lisi, about the many services and programs available to lawyers in Nassau County and, to, more importantly, to the general public in Nassau County. And if you missed any portion of the program, you can go to the podcast at nccradio.org. Uh, Greg, one of the programs at the Bar Association, which could be more important than ever as we steer our way through COVID, is the Speakers Bureau of the Bar Association. And just tell us how, how that helps lawyers who are members of the Bar Association and the community. So it, it, it works in both directions. You're absolutely right, Ken. The, the Speakers Bureau is there specifically set up that if any organization, and it doesn't matter what the organization is, it could be a library, it could be a religious organization, it can be the Kiwanis. If they have an a, a, a topic that they feel they would like an attorney to come and talk to their members about, they can just call the Bar Association at 516-747-4070 and ask for the Speakers Bureau. And they will tell the topic to the person uh, who, who runs that program. And we will get them an attorney who has knowledge in that area of law. And they will come to their church, to their library, to their meeting hall, 
uh, and speak on that topic. The topics are as wide ranging as you can possibly imagine. I personally have spoken on labor and employment issues, sexual harassment issues, immigration issues, real estate issues. Other people speak on disability, as we were just talking about, veterans' rights. We do a lot of issues with veterans' rights where we go to the American legions, etc., um, and speak about that. And it's, it's really uh, uh, something that's fantastic. There's no topic that's off limits. You can have somebody come and talk. And we've had people come and talk um, who, who have, or have experience in their fields 20, 30, 40 years on the topic. And it's a very good free source of speakers for any community groups, for PTAs, for even you know students out there, for for all kinds of groups. You will have a speaker to match the needs and interests of their group at no charge. At no charge. And it's free. It's wonderful for the attorney because he comes out and can talk to people who are interested in his area of law. And it's wonderful for your group because they have the ability to get a speaker who knows what they're talking about. And Greg, you mentioned earlier that the you know the Bar Association provides all the continuing legal education benefits for lawyers, both new and, and old. But what are some of the, the benefits to lawyers of joining the Bar Association, whether they're young, whether they're an attorney out there practicing, or a big law firm out there? Why should they have their attorneys belong to the Nassau County Bar Association? Well, there's so many different reasons for lawyers to be members of this Bar Association. Um, the most important one is we're probably the largest networking group there is. Uh, we have over 5,000 members. Um, those members uh, cover every possible area of law. Um, you get to meet people who do the same thing you do, who may have more experience than you do, You may, and you meet people who do things that you don't do. And you can ask them questions and you can that people refer clients back and forth all the time. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can find people who know what they're talking about and you can discuss things with them. Um, the, the For younger attorneys, it's great to have mentors, people you can bounce ideas off of. Honestly, they get jobs out of this. Uh, and that's good for well. older attorneys, too. As you confronting well, new issues, it gives you a committee of peers or a committee in a different area of law that you can bounce your own ideas off or, or problems you're having in your office or in your career. That's absolutely true. I have to tell you, because I do labor and employment law, I get many calls from attorneys talking about their own offices. Uh, well, what about, can I bring these attorneys and force them to come back to the office during COVID? You know, that was a very common question. And that, how did they know who I was? They met me at the Bar Association. And, and if that's there's, true across the board. And if there's a young attorney who wants to start their practice, if there's an older lawyer who wants to retire, or perhaps lawyers who want to merge their practice, the Bar Association is a great place to make those connections. That's absolutely true. I've, I've told the story many times that I have hired many attorneys for my firm right out of the committee that we need somebody in. So if I needed a new associate in my labor and employment law department, I hired somebody right off the labor and employment law committee. And I'm sure that happens many times around at the Bar Association through the networking, both formal and informal that goes on there. I just want to congratulate Greg S. Lisi, our new president of the Bar Association, and you've heard about the many programs. For more programs or for information on the programs that he's mentioned, please go to nasabar.org or call the Nassau County, the Bar Association at 516-747-4070. And if you missed any portion of the program or want to tell someone else about it, it's available as a podcast at nccradio.org. Uh, this is Ken Landau, and you're listening to Law You Should Know on 90.3, the voice of NASA Community College. And please join us next week at this same time for another program on Law You Should Know. 